Like travel or something, do some off-roading, it can hurt your motor. Why? Boom. Okay. Uh, Welcome back everybody. We'll be discussing two things today. Uh, some changes on what we had to do to get the suspension on the NC700 sorted out in the front. I'll leave my son to do that explanation for you. And I will be talking about the rear suspension and wheel and what I had to do to make it work. But our second video, the, I think it will be part 7, I'll list down front and rear part numbers, what I've used, bearing sizes, uh, what I've done to get it to the point where it is now. Well, the rear wheel is in and, uh, and you'll see a little bit later in the video what it looks like now. Uh, I'm still missing on the bash plate, that's that still in order. And the extensions on the rear. But let's quickly have a chat on what we had to do to make this work. Right, can it? It's actually a pretty easy and straightforward thing to do, basically. We took the um, NC700 triple tree clamp out of the yoke and we put the Trans Sub 650 2005 model in. This is this thingy mobile here. And we drilled a board, the hole a little bit bigger because the stain is also again a little bit bigger and we also put 35 millimeter extensions on and I think that's it okay so if you can show the audience what what we actually did um, explain to them what, what did okay. we replace here we replaced the NC 700s this thingy the triple tree uh, well triple tree clamp, clamp with the Trans 650 and we also drilled this hole here a little bit bigger and we put 35 millimeter extensions on these two holes on the top okay so what Caleb is referring to is the stem on the end uh, this is the Trans Alp 650 stem obviously yes. it's it's shorter than your NC700 unit the NC700 unit is slightly longer these are the NC700 triple tree clamps and what we've done is basically swapped this pin from the Trans Alp 650 2005 and the NC700 and obviously we've used the rest of the Trans Alp parts and we have installed it in the bike so really straightforward on the front suspension this was the main part that we had to change and obviously then I had two extensions uh, built up out of aluminium 35, 35 millimeters long which slot in on the top here so that in a nutshell is about the front suspension and how we got it to work so I used the standard Trans Alp 650 front wheel standard discs standard wheel bearings and as we go up obviously we've changed the triple two clamp and the yoke swap that uh, and then the one thing that I had a problem with is the steering lock mechanism so I had to on the Trans Alp unit I had to actually cut off the bits at the bottom that engages the steering lock the Trans Alp unit is on the top right on the on the stem uh, section right right at the top I haven't done anything about that yet I'll obviously get to it at some stage and when you turn sharp left and you turn sharp right it catches on the tank just above where the key is to open your uh, boot on the front or your front I'll need to make two indentations there to get that sorted out but that covers the front end suspension as I said the only thing is we swap the NC700 stem and that was it but I'll list part numbers and bearings and I think we can talk a bit more about the rear and what I did but first I want to show you some pictures of what it looks like now and then we'll get into the discussion on the rear all right let's check it out all right everybody this is progress that we have so far I have installed the rear wheel two things still outstanding which my son will explain to you guys 
Cut it, take it away. Okay, so there's two links here at the bottom, which will replace right here, which will raise the rear travel up by like 25 millimeters. And we also have to fit a new bash plate in. Then we're basically done. Why do we want to put a bash plate on? Because we go to like travel or something, do some off-roading, it can hurt your motor. Why? Boom. Okay. And obviously the rear will lift by 25 millimeters with the two links two that links, we will yeah. be installing. Okay. And maybe respray. Oh yeah. No, that's the obvious. Huh? Yeah, that still has to come. Yeah. Anything else you want to say there? I don't think so. I mean, the bike's pretty good, not gonna lie. I see there's some mount there too. Yeah, that's a GPS, my thingy. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, let me, let me explain to you a bit more about this bike in a nutshell. I'm not gonna be taking up your time too long. There will be a part seven after this, which I'll explain all the detail, what we did and what not. Seven, maybe eight. Hmm? Seven or maybe eight. Seven or maybe eight. But the main thing with this bike, and please, if you guys know somebody that has done this build, put it in the comments below, because I have not seen anything anywhere in the world done like this. And the NC700 and NC750 would actually be the best adventure bike to own, because two categories, single cylinders, XR600, XR650, KLR650, KLE500, DRZ, you name it, they all come in the left part of my, my left side, 170, 180 kilograms, more or less around about there. The next section is right on the right hand side, KTM 990, 950, BMW GS 1200 Triumph, Triumph 1200 XT, 1200 Super Tenere, they are here, big bulky bikes, 200 25 kilogram, no, well, it's actually more. Let's say 250, 350. 350 might be exaggerating, but with a full tank and luggage, you can get there closely. But you get my point, these are big bikes, they're on the right hand side. Uh, dual cylinders, or in, well, most of them are inline twins, triple, like on the uh, Triumph, is a triple cylinder. Irrespective, big bikes, <coughs> bulky. Awesome bikes, nothing wrong with them. On the left hand side, Nothing wrong with the KLRs and those. Maximum speed KLRs on the open road, 120. If you go anything more than that, you'll be hang, hanging on for dear life on the bars. Not meant to go over 130, really. On this side, 160, 140, 160, 180, 200 all day long. Fine, it's a good road travel bike on that sense. In the middle, in the middle we have this. It's an inline twin, it's very light on fuel, weighs in at 211 kilograms, more or less. Can do more than 120, does less than 160, 180. I think the top speed is rated at 175, but uh, I doubt it. On the open road, 150, 140, you're happy there. And as I said on previous video, low center of gravity, tank is underneath. This is not a tank, this is just open space where you can put all your stuff light on fuel 30 to 35 k's a liter raised suspension in the front you don't need anything more than that <coughs> i've have my, my initial idea behind this build was to build a mild adventure bike my next build will certainly be an nc750 not because it has more power because it doesn't really anyway but it's got a bunch of more features and I'll read up on that but I'll do the NC750 and I will certainly install a Honda RD07 Africa Twin 1995 to 2000 43 millimeter front suspension with um, progressive springs in because that is the ideal what I want out of that NC750 and on the rear I'll do the same as on this I'll do a lot of detail on what I had to do on this rear wheel fitment. You won't be able to see everything, but what I would like to quickly talk about is <coughs> in order to get check it off as if you make a scene rocks it. In order for me to get this rear wheel conversion properly sorted out, 
<coughs> I had to take the standard NC wheel, install it as it should be, and from there I had to measure what the sprocket alignment is exactly as per OEM. And I took measurements for that. So when I installed this rim on the Transalp 650, I had to space it up exactly to that measurement. And as soon as I got it there, from there, I worked to the right hand side with the caliper and the disc and what else need be. Now my big problem was Transalp 650 525 chain, NC700 520 chain. Luckily for me, I had an XL600 sprocket on the shelf, brand new, 40 teeth, and guess what? It fits exactly on the Transalp 650 rim. So I kept it 520 throughout the bank, no problem. That is sorted, and I'm glad. I don't have to buy aftermarket stuff or weird bearings or whatever the case may be, uh, non standard stuff. It, it is fine. So we've got the Transalp uh, wheel and the XL600 sprocket. That was lined up. I started working towards my right hand side. One thing I had to do, the only thing I had to do on the Transalp rim is where your sprocket bearing goes in right on the outside. I had to machine it, mill it out a bit, fit a bigger standard bearing and work my way from there uh, towards the brake caliper. Now, I thought of using the <coughs> Transalp 650 rear master cylinder and the complete unit I had to cut out a bit and get that to shave in but it didn't really work out so I ended up using the standard Transalp 650 caliper and I used the standard NC700 bracket that actually fastens and slots in onto your swing arm and believe it or not the Transalp 650 unit fits exactly perfectly on it two bolts Nothing to be modified, St stock standard. Obviously I'll um, have to replace the discs still. I'm still waiting for the front discs. And then I built spacers and I clamped down the rear wheel to AA 98 Newton meters. I took it out this morning for a quick ride. It rides awesome. It handles perfect. It's lightweight, you can maneuver in traffic, you've got the suspension travel. I took it out to the back, um, did some mud riding with it, and it really handles like my old Audi 07 expected to handle. Um, the only difference is I'm sitting on a different suspension setup and seating is different, and it's obviously fuel injected now, but on the road, on, 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 the, on the gravel, it, it felt like my Audi 07 not too different so the next step is obviously get the bash plate and um, I will do a test ride with it and I'll do a review of what my findings are and I'll give you guys feedback on it it's almost done and I've had a chat to a few people and believe me Honda should have built this bike it's a shame they haven't it's a pity and it really makes the world of a difference with your 21 inch wheel travel uh, 21 inch wheel in the front and your 238 245 wheel travel that you have in the front now it feels nice and light it corners good with the 40 instead of the 43 oh and here's the other thing that I've picked up on my audio 7 you will rev it, rev it into a straight on a dirt road and, and, and you'll get the feeling with your rev range and the power delivery to the rear wheel. You get to know these things. And you can see a corner in the front and you start gearing off and apply a bit more power, a bit more revs and there you go. With this it's different. Because it's a low revving motor and it's got so much torque and as soon as you do two to three thousand RPMs on a gravel road and you go and you change gears, you're like at 75 95 kilometers per hour like that and then here's a corner in front of you so you have to get used to not listening to the revs on the motor but actually checking the speed because it's a low revving engine so don't try and ride it up there um, one of those uh, subscribers commented 
that on the NC with 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 a steep uphills that that he has, I think it's in Texas somewhere that his friends spin out the rear wheels of their bikes due to revs high. But with this one low low down rev motor, a lot of torque, he just basically glides over all the obstacles with no ease at all. So let me put this through its paces. Um, I need to really do about a thousand kilometers to prove that the concept works. There are no problems, there are no hiccups. And I'll give you a review, but first I obviously want to put a bash plate on before I do really bad, bad roads. But this is a well-kept secret, guys. And I don't care who disagrees with me. This is a very good ad adventure bike, which Honda has never built. So, wait for the next video, and um, I'll update you what we do, fit the bash plate, and then obviously get a bit of spray work done, and then we'll go and ride it, and we'll review it, and I'll tell you guys all about it. If you can build one of these, it's awesome. 35 k's a liter, 30 k's a liter, whatever the case may be, it's really well worth it. And from what I felt, I'm definitely going to enjoy it on the gravel roads, but we'll have to wait and see. Let me get back to you and then we'll chat more about it. Until part 6 or 7, about 7 and thereafter. Safe travels and uh, thanks for supporting us. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to the channel, follow the bold and please leave comments. I need comments. Interact with us. Tell me what you think about it. Is it rubbish? Is it a good idea? All right, we'll chat later. Bye-bye, everybody.